Hey guys, welcome back to Dark Souls 3 Scholar of the First Sin New Game Plus. It's It's been a long time. It's been way too long. But anyway, we were almost done last time. Way, way back when Scholar of the First Sin first came out, I did a full playthrough using a... Mostly like, yeah, it was, a, it was like a dex sword build. Specifically, my goal was to not use any shields. And I finished that. And then I entered New Game Plus, and here I am in New Game Plus, and I got all the way through the campaign again, and did two of the DLCs, but we never did this one, and it's been this thing on my to-do list that's frankly been on my to-do list for an embarrassingly long time. I apologize for that, but here we are. I'm back. Because, for love of God, Dark Souls 3 is about to come out, and I better finish my fourth playthrough of Dark Souls 2 before that happens, or I never will. <laughs> At least, with Bloodborne, I don't have to think about the fact that the next DLC... I don't have to think about the fact that the sequel's coming out already. I'm a little worried. Because, uh... The last... <laughs> with the, as far as Souls-likes go, or Soulsborne games, and even from Software's games themselves and everything... My most recent two experiences have been... Uh... Salt and Sanctuary, and... Uh... Bloodborne's expansion, The Old Hunters. So... Uh, suffice to say, now that I'm playing this game again... Boy, do, uh, Dark Souls characters feel slow and t and, uh, heavy all of a sudden. By the way, expect to, expect to watch me to walk up to items and chests and bonfires like this and then backstep like a jackass. Because somebody's gotten used to interacting with the environment with Circle. At this point, what's probably pretty good news is that it takes a fairly long time to get to the actual bosses in this expansion. Which is probably good news for me, because, uh... I'm gonna need, to, I'm gonna need a few minutes to get back in the swing of things. I'm a little worried. Because I was already having trouble with this playthrough a little bit. Not that, not nearly as much as I did the very first time I played Dark Souls 2, for example. But, uh... I was having a little trouble with the fact that, uh... Doing big, heavy, awkward, slow weapons. Not really the... Not really the easiest switch for me. There we go. He didn't He didn't hit me. That's a good start. But yeah, a lot of you are actually new around here. I've gotten... Possibly... That's... <laughs> I had to fight the ghosts outside here, so for a second there I thought that was one of them. But no, they're not in this expansion. Uh, hello guys. Hello! Oh. Excuse me. A lot of you are actually new around here, so if you're new around here, just so you know, yes. I've on my channel, there is a playthrough of Dark Souls. Uh, this is my fourth playthrough of Dark Souls 2. There's a playthrough of Blo Bloodborne and its expansion. There's two playthroughs of Demon Souls. And there's even uh, m a large chunk of a New Game Plus playthrough of Dark Souls of uh, Bloodborne, which I will also finish at some point. None of these things were supposed to fall off quite the way they did, but... Uh, Doing a YouTube channel while working a job makes it very easy to have things fall off sometimes. You have to be all aggressive about new releases and all that. But anyway, yes, I am looking forward to Dark Souls 3, and no, I cannot answer any of your questions about it. People ask, people like to ask about what I'm looking forward to about Dark Souls 3 and stuff like that, and it's like, no, that's not how I do things on here. I find out, I experience the game for the first time when it comes out. And that's it. So no, I'm not gonna watch the Vati Vidya videos or whatever where he's playing it early or when people are like oh let's I'm gonna talk about Dark Souls news but while I'm talking about Dark Souls news I'm also showing you like a boss fight on in the background and spoiling it oh crap I, I had a nasty little moment there for a second there where I, I forgot about the fact that uh if you hit the joystick in a certain direction you're, uh, even if you're locked on, it'll change the direction of your weapon swings. Gotta get that back in my brain. As someone who used a lot of dex weapons in the past, that- that just literally is not an element. That- oh, hello. Oh, that was a mistake. I did not roll past him at all. Sweet. I did it. I did it. I'm gonna go over here now, guy. Hang on, hang on! Give me a second, buddy. I kinda blew that. Alright, you- you, come over here. Oh, you sneaky. Oh, crap. Here I was thinking I could hide behind the door frame. I was mistaken. There we go. Take a seat. What? That was interesting. 
So what happened there? I think that perhaps me swinging through the roof? I could be wrong from the perspective, but it looked like my hitbox should have hit him. So maybe hitting the door frame cancels all damage of that swing because of how heavy of a of an impact it was on the environment. I'm not sure. But yes, I will be going into Dark Souls 3 blind. But yes, to answer everyone's questions, and I'm, I'm just going to keep answering this as many lo locations as possible because people keep asking. Yes, of course, I'm playing Dark Souls 3 on this channel. Why would I not? <laughs> You got you people are crazy. They keep asking me these questions as if there's going to be any other answer. <laughs> Hello. Here we go. I'm taking damage like crazy. I am going to have to readjust. Good thing I got all these life gems to sort of cheese. It's interesting how you can just kind of spam life gems the way you can. It's not, it's not a fake wall, is it? I didn't think it was. This is fake, right? I never trust these damn symbols. I sincerely hope that Dark Souls 3 uh, makes illusory walls something that you break by hitting them with your attack again, instead of uh, pressing X on them, because I find it actively infuriating that... Uh, the number one way you would that a lot of players know about walls in the first place is a is a message on the floor that's like, "Hey, there's a mess. There's a wall over here," and then the only way to activate the wall is to hit X, which also is how you activate the message. So you can't tell if you're being duped and there's just no wall there, or if you can't click on the wall because the message is there because the message might be blocking the wall itself. I don't really know. There might be, it might be that the message automatically gets pushed back a little bit if the, if there actually is something there. I don't know. Hello. If I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, there might be zero reason to kill those guys. I think they don't really wake up until oh yeah, they don't wake up until we thaw this whole place. Hello. Rude. Guys, notice me. Witness me. Uh oh, that was almost really bad for me. Oop. Good dodge. A lot of stamina though. Yes. My attack was slightly faster, which comes as a surprise because I'm using freaking Fume Greatsword, which is a really fun weapon to use, but also kind of comically impractical from a conceptual standpoint. Hello, friend. You're a sneaky one. Come on. Here we go. There's two things I always tell myself we're going to have constant Souls or Souls-like videos on the channel, and constant puzzle game videos on the channel. And I somehow managed i somehow managed to consistently mess that up. And it's dangerous to take a break. I'm feeling in real time how dangerous it is to take a break from this genre, or subgenre, whatever you want to call it. Because they feel they have such a specific timing and weight to them. It's been a long time now, since I had the feeling that my character was slow and heavy in a Dark Souls game. Of course they are compared to like any other game, but uh, you just get so used to it that it doesn't, it doesn't register for you anymore. Because it just, it just it becomes a matter of fact of like, that's how they move. And you adapt to it. Take a seat. What? There's some interesting hitbox happening there. Alright. Maybe they're harder to hit when they're knocked down. See here. Anything? Nope, nothing back there. Hup. I see you, buddy. You hang out. You just hang on for a bit. Oh yeah, that's frozen. I can't go there at all yet. Hup. Right, we need to thaw everything before we do much else. These DLCs really do capture the full feeling of what a Dark Souls area feels like. So I think Dark Souls 2 is a great game, just all, like on its own standpoint, but of course a lot of people have issues with this level design compared to other Dark Souls games and Demon Souls or whatever. And I think this play I think the three expansions really captured what what how to make the levels just right in a lot of ways. Hup. Take a seat. And a big part of that comes from the fact that when you first explore these areas, they feel huge. Oh, that wasn't even a fog door. Huh. <laughs> 
Amazing how many things you can forget, huh? I actually don't have that many repair powders, so I'll hold on for a little longer. I, felt like I thought I stocked up on them, but... It's dangerous for me, for me to think anything about how the, the state of this playthrough because of how long it's been. Four months? Five months? Months and months? I don't even... I genuinely don't know how long it's been and I, I feel bad about it. Hey, friend. Uh oh Distance problems. Oh, no! Joystick! Oh, there's a dog in there, too, just to add to the problems. Oh! There we go. That's more what I was intending. Crap, crap, crap! 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 <laughs> Things have gone better for me in the past, I'll admit. Hey, doggy. Oh! Oh! He, what? Alright. I'm misjudging distances in, a, in the worst way right now, apparently. I gotta get back in the rim, Thumb! Hello? That's not an attack. Kind of an attack, but not really. Dog! Damn it, dog. I just want you to not be alive. <laughs> this dog is the danger here. Uh oh. That's bad. That's bad. Wow. I'm, I'm really excelling at not hit making contact with my attacks so far. Dog, you gonna... Everything I do is based around you right now. Uh-oh. Here it comes. There we go. There's that little dashing bastard out of the way. Is that an item? Nope. Hello? Friend? Stagger? There we go. We cleared him out. It went fine. I didn't even take a single point of damage. Just don't look at my health bar for like a few more seconds. So oh, this guy's still one of you? Oh, he took damage. He just kind of ran away, I guess. Or maybe he leashed. Both possible. Let's have the- let's do the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. So in case you hadn't pieced together yet, no, I'm not one of the, uh... The uh, designated... Pillars of the Dark Souls community that uh, got to have free advanced copies. Shockingly early, actually. This is rather unprecedented, actually. Uh, a lot of channels are just already playing Dark Souls 3, and they're just allowed to put up footage already. That's that's usually not how it works. Early copies are relatively common, actually, but an early copy that also lets you like just cover a bunch of the game on your channel, for example weeks before it comes out is rather rare. Oh, not- I wonder what the- the lot- what the, uh, what makes this specific situation so different. But until then, I get to practice. Take a seat. Goodbye. So I have mixed feelings about this DLC, which is probably... I wouldn't be surprised if it contributed somewhat to the- to the- to, uh... The reason for why I uh, didn't cover it for a while, because I did the rest of the game, and I was ready. For, I was uh, I was ready to do this DLC, and I did the other two DLCs in like one sitting each, basically. So I was like, "Oh yeah, we'll do this one, no big deal." And then we'll wrap it up, and it's like, "Yeah, victory lap." I did the whole playthrough, but uh, I I can't help it. I kind of dread playing this DLC, and it's weird because I uh, I basically like the entire DLC except the optional co-op area. Because the rest of it's- I think the rest of it's pretty fun. I like this part. Navigating this big snowy area and then thawing it to navigate it again, but now it's different and stuff like that. Like, that's a- that's always a fun little trick to do, is when you take an existing environment and then you change it over time. Because it makes it all feel lived in, and as you explore it over and over again, it feels like a more memorable location. And that's cool. But goddamn, if the frigid outskirts are just not are not my just least liked location in any Souls game, like all of Dark Souls and Demon Souls and Bloodborne and Salt and Sanctuary, maybe even Lords of the Fallen, honestly, like just the entire subgenre and games that try to copy it, uh, frigid outskirts might be the place I like the least, just because it's a uh, it's a giant open area with almost no special details or interesting tidbits. Aside from a few, uh, aside from a few spawning enemies that look a little different here and there, there's a few unique soldiers here and there, but those are really just armor sets and weapon selections on a generic PvP invader type character. But damn, if the uh, reindeer are not just the most infuriating enemy to deal with, 
Oh, here we go. Let's be careful here. We don't want to start the zone over. Uh oh. Aha! That's a good. That's a good roll. Here comes the spell, right? Yep. I see you coming. I know what you're up to. It's not even. It's funny because in previous Souls games, if there was any specific thing I was dreading fighting, it was usually a boss that really kicks my ass. And I'll admit that the uh, the double boss, the optional boss of this area, not easy. Uh, it has its own difficulties, but it's really just the fact that uh, you have to do the zone beach before it every single time you want to come back that really makes me not want to do it. Because even if it's... You, what I find about the frigid outskirts is that the more, I f the more I develop new strategies for doing it and the better I get at getting through that area, it still never gets more fun. And that's the, that's the weird thing about it. Like every... Uh oh. One of the things about Souls games in general is that uh, sometimes there'll often be areas that really frustrated me early on, but then I'll come back to them when I'm, when I have them more figured out in my head, and I'll have a point where, are you a, you are an enemy. I'll 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 I'll, I'll inevitably have some kind of point where like oh, there's a tipping point in my brain, and suddenly like oh yeah I got I have the zone figured out. I'm like oh actually this is kind of fun, this is kind of a cool little place. It used to piss me off. I mean. If you go, if you rewind far enough as a, as a Dark Souls player, most of us had a period of time where we thought the Tauros Demon or the the Bell Guardians gargo gargoyles were invincible bullshit bosses, <laughs> unless you play, unless you beat all of Demon Souls first, and then you're probably ahead of all of us. But even Demon Souls, you probably hit a part with like the Tower Knight or something where you're like, "What the fuck is this?" Until it clicks for you. But uh, the frigid outskirts, even as I start figuring out how to do them correctly. I still consistently hate the experience, <laughs> and that's a bummer. It's a bummer to feel that way about one of my favorite games ever, basically. Because despite any complaints there are to be had about Dark Souls 2, I still think it's one of my favorite, most cherished experiences out there. Even if that has to share a space with every other Souls game, too, in that list. Hello! Oh. Well, you were thoroughly out of range, weren't you? That was silly. We both missed, but at least I got to do that. I'd like to pretend that, that I did it on purpose, but that was completely accidental. <laughs> it was cool, though. Nothing like like nothing like a backstab you didn't mean to do. I never really even considered backstabbing these guys, because they're not like... I guess they're humanoid, but they just don't feel like the type of thing I'd try to backstab, generally. Yeah? I guess it's pretty easy. Huh. They're weird, spiky... Like golemness makes me just didn't make me consider it originally. I guess. Hey, friend. Wow, that's actually shockingly consistent. That simplifies the process of figuring out whether or not my handful of swings will kill him before he gets to react or not. I guess. Man, talk about it. Talk about a zone that starts out really easy, and then you come back here when there's twice as many enemies, and suddenly you're like, oh, this I have to reconsider everything. Hey, friend. Friend? Yeah. If I sound like I'm not in the moment enough in this pl in this uh, commentary, it's uh, I'm definitely do I'm definitely doing my current commentary in a way that it's kind of assuming you've watched the stuff up to this point, which is probably a dumb idea, I guess, because uh, I've already acknowledged that thousands of people are here that were not here last time I played this game, which is a little silly of me. Hello, down there. Right, I rested at a fountain, so everything down at that fountain is now... I mean, I rested at a fire at a fireplace, so now all that fountain stuff is restored. Hey, guys. Kind of forgot about this little wraparound. Dark dance spell. Here we go. Onward. We haven't died yet. That's a good start. That means that even if my skills have degraded a bit, I'm... A mixture of uh, personal skill and uh, and maybe just player knowledge is making me still alive at a point in the play in the playthrough where I would have. I'm pretty sure I died multiple times getting this far when I played th when I played this area blind. So that's something. Can I backstab these guys? I mean, they're humanoid, so I'd assume so. They could, they could be really tough though. Nope, that was easy. Wow. Hey, he's just dead. Holy crap. It's funny, I, I, I used to be all about baiting backstabs in Dark Souls 1, because 
it was just such a devastating attack and so many enemies were so threatening. But uh, I hit a point where it was just, it was all hit and run tactics for me. If you watch me play Bloodborne or Salt and Sanctuary, you just get used to the idea of like, I'm gonna be constantly backing away and like, trying to just barely stay out of melee range while, while p poking in with a quick attack and then, then retreating again, oftentimes. Hello. Oh. He seems friendly. Got him. Nope, that was not what I was going for. But hey, I killed that guy behind me on accident. <laughs> That was actually pretty funny. I didn't even know that that worked that way, actually. So I attacked him, and then I pulled the weapon out of the ground with the secondary attack. And it w went behind me, and it actually killed the guy behind me. It makes perfect logical sense from a physics standpoint. I'm just a little surprised that they... Uh, that doesn't even open yet. Whoops. Not that I'm in a particular hurry, because right... That, that's my... This right here. Is just my least liked thing in a Souls game that I can think of, really. As I was saying earlier. But let's not dwell on that too much. I'm playing the fun part. Cause this, cause this boss, this uh, DLC has some pretty cool boss fights. Generally, oh yeah, I'm getting some attention. Oh, what were you doing? I wasn't even fighting him. I just want, looked around. I'm like, oh yeah, let's deal with this guy now. Oh, I'm backstabbing him. He just had his back to me when I wasn't even trying to do make that happen. I suppose if you... Oh, this is important, yeah. Remember remember which one's the Mimic. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, hang on a second. That's awfully suspicious. When I unfreeze this place, I'm gonna have to remember a thing or two. But, uh... What was I trying to say? Crap. Oh, yeah, the, uh... If, if we pull the camera back, we'd, we would probably find out that that guy... Are there invisible enemies here? We'd probably find out that that guy was, uh... He was probably in the process of trying to attack me with his long... Like his... Oh, wow, actually, I... What? I backstabbed an invisible man? Sure, why not? Why not? That's silly. Pshoom! Anyone over there? <laughs> I backstabbed an invisible man. Video games are silly. Hello. Oh, crap, 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 crap. Did not mean to ask this. There's the fun danger of playing multiple games of similar style that keep changing what the attack button is. Where's the bad guy at? Crap. Crap. I don't know where the bad guy is. Oh, is that him up there? No, that might have been a human. Bad guy? Well, there's one. Why was his health bar showing up for a second? Yep. There we go. Found one. Oh, he's not dead. Is he dead now? I got some souls. That's a good start. Who's a pain in the ass? If you are. But yeah, the, I never finished that thought, did I? The guy who was uh, standing around behind me with the lance, he probably did his lance attack directly to the wall. Right, I need- I, I, I can use a lock stone here, but I need to have... It needs to be unfrozen first, like most parts of this area. He's probably la lancing the wall like he missed, and he was just doing that animation for a super long time, because I think it is a pretty long animation. And so it just seemed like he was being an idiot. Anyone following me around me right now? I'd like to be able to pick you out in the storm. Don't know how many bad guys there are. Just stay out of, out of the way of that uh, obstacle as much as I can. 